How you doing? Put your mask on. Don't tell me what to do. Please put your mask on. It's, it's required by law in the circle. I'm standing six feet away. I'm sorry. It's required in the Okay, circle. I'll tell you put what, because you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it because I'm going to have a chat with you. Why aren't you supporting President Trump? That was Senator Mitt Romney being confronted by an angry Trump supporter at the airport on January 5th of 2021. And it is emblematic of Romney's experience as a Republican in the Trump era, and one that could arguably have contributed to his announcement last month that he will not seek re-election in 2024. In advance of this, over the course of two years, Senator Romney gave extensive interviews and access to one journalist, McKay Coppins of The Atlantic. In Coppins' new essential biography, Romney reveals all of his thoughts on Trump and the Republican Party at a moment when both remain very much in crisis. Joining me now is the author himself, Kay Coppins, who is a staff writer at The Atlantic and author of the new book out today, Romney, A Reckoning. McKay, congratulations on a book that is so well-timed, so deeply researched. The reviews have been extraordinary. Um, we have a lot to get to, so we're going to get to it right now. First... The, the level of prof the just profound personal animus mm -hmm. that Romney holds for other leading lights in the Republican Party, this is just a few highlights. Ron DeSantis, there's no, just no warmth at all. And that's one of the nicer quotes. Newt Gingrich, a smug know-it-all, smarmy and too pleased with himself. Santorum, sanctimonious, severe, strange. Rick Perry, Republicans must realize that we have to have someone who can complete a sentence. Ted Cruz, frightening, scary, a demagogue. Huckabee, a huckster, a caricature of a for-profit preacher. Bobby Jindal, a twit. John Kasich, lack of thoughtfulness, lack of attentiveness, ego. No wonder he and Chris Christie spark. With friends like that, um, I am eager to know whether this, this distrust, this distaste, for, for the leaders in his party, was, was, was it always in him, or did Trump really catalyze a sense of anger and frustration? Well, I, I think that, that what's important to know about those quotes is some of them are things that he told me over the course of, course of those two years. Some of them are from his journals dating back a, a decade, right? And so what that shows is that for a long time, he has had a sense that the Republican base gravitates toward figures who he finds unimpressive, uh, to say the least, yeah. sometimes frightening, right? Um, but especially in the last few years, he's seen the party, uh, you know, become more and more populist, more and more extreme. And, you know, th th those quotes have started to get a lot of attention in the last few days. And people have said, oh, he's consumed with resentments. He's just, you know, mad that he lost his election. I think it, what it really ref reflects is a profound disappointment yeah. in the leaders of his party, this party that he once believed in so much, that he thought represented all these things like free trade and democracy promotion. Um, and, and now he sees it become a cult of personality around Donald Trump. And he sees these people he once did respect or at least hold in high regard um, rally around Donald Trump, even while in private they tell him, yeah, Donald Trump is a menace. Yeah, he's, he's terrible, but we have to do this because we need to win our next election. I think something after January 6th and him just snapped yeah. and he was finally ready to unburden himself. And that, that's really what he did with me for two years. I do have to ask, because you bring it up, like, does Romney see himself as part of the trajectory towards Trump, however incremental. I mean, he did run for office mm -hmm. multiple times, higher office multiple times in 2012. He helped move the party rightward on immigration and the social safety net. Does he, does he see himself implicated at all in the sort of indignant roots of Trumpism? Well, that's actually kind of the question that hung over all of our conversations for two years. And I asked, it, I asked him multiple times, you know, how complicit are you in what the party has become? And to his credit, he spent a lot of time grappling with that question. And, you know, he basically the story of his career over the last, you know, 10 years, 15 years is flirting with uh, the, the far right in his party 
in hopes of winning a primary, winning, becoming president, right? But he always believed that he could keep them at bay, right? He could harness the energy of the the extreme forces in his party, but not, uh, you know, not give in to them, not let them take over the party. Uh, he told me when he was running for president, his whole strategy was, I just have to get to 50.1%. Mm -hmm. And so that means standing on, on stage and accepting Donald Trump's endorsement, I'll, I'll do it, right? Now he looks back at those episodes with some regret. He told me, you know, if I did something to uh, to give credibility to Donald Trump as a political figure, I regret it. Um, but he also thinks that I think it's hard for him to accept too much blame yeah. because he has been one of very few Republicans who has tried to push back against uh, the spread of Trumpism in his party, while almost no one else is willing. Well, voted for Trump's impeachment, said what he said after January 6th. It seems like he also reserves a special place in hell, for lack of a better term, for the Republicans who he knows know, knows better. Yeah. He knows no know better, yes. including Josh Hawley or even Ted Cruz, these mm -hmm. kind of Ivy League trained lawyers who he thinks are among some of the smartest people in government right. who not only abide Donald Trump, but support him, who 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 give him the 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 bully pulpit effectively. One of the things he told me is, you know, with people like Ron Johnson, who, who's a conspiracy theorist, I'm actually more OK with him because he seems to genuinely believe the crazy things he says. What he said to me is that Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz know better, they, but, but they affect this kind of you know, uh, holier than now righteous indignation on behalf of the populist elements of their party that he knows is a put on. And it, it really drives him crazy. And, and that that uh, that frustration animated a lot of our conversations. It's it's hard to know whether the story of Mitt Romney will be one that is seen as a tragedy or uh, a, a story about a, a hero or maybe it's both. I mean, you have this mm -hmm. devastating anecdote of him basically sitting alone by himself in his Washington, D.C. apartment, eating salmon on a hamburger bun with ketchup, watching Ted Lasso by himself because nobody else wants to hang out with him. And he's now leaving the party, mm -hmm. kind of crushed by the machine that he was once in charge of. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I think that he deserves some credit for this last few years coming to terms with what his party has become uh, and what complicity the kind of mainstream establishment that he was part of has in what that party has become. But he's paid a price, right? His, he's paid a price for his opposition to Trump. Not only has it effectively ended his political career, he really would have struggled to get reelected in Utah, but he's lost friends. He's lost relationships. Um, I've seen people, even since this book, uh, the, the leaks have started from this book, people who, you know, once considered themselves big Mitt Romney fans or partisan Republicans now kind of turning on him. And I think he deserves some credit for even if it was later in his career, being willing to say the things mm -hmm. that very few in his party are willing to say. And say them to you, my friend. <laughs> he said them all to you. You got everything. I still can't believe it. What a book. McKay Coppins, congratulations on Pub Day. May you move many units, my friend. You deserve it. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Alex.